Peter Davis, born Mary Frances Pinnock, December 30, 1931, was an American country music singer. Pinnock was born in Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Because her grandfather thought she had a lot of energy for a young child, he nicked the name Mary Frances Keeter, slang for mosquito. Francis Pinnock. Mary Francis Pinnock. Well, as you said, that's what that's the name I was born with. Mary Francis. My daddy named me that. Pinnock? Pinnock, that was my little maiden name. Uh, you were the, the, the oldest of seven children. Mm hmm Still am too, Arch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes I feel like When did only... you discover you wanted to be a country singer? Well, I always loved it. I think the first time I really, really started loving country music was when I heard the Carter family singing Keep on the Sunny Side. Keep on, on the sunny, sunny side, always on the sunny side. side. Keep, Keep on the sunny side, side of life. You, yes, you, sir, that very song. Huh? I was about, I think I was in the fifth grade, and I just came in from milking the cows. And I uh, heard that milk? on the radio, because my mother was the country music fan. And did she'd you, did you learn to milk when you were young? I was in the fifth grade. Let's see, I was 10 years old. Yeah, to get, to get a job like that, you're going to have a lot of pull, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> While attending Dixie Heights High School, Skeeter met Betty Jack Davis. The two became close friends and bonding over their love of music. They began singing songs and playing guitar together during breaks at school. This drew attention from their classmates and they performed in several school talent shows. RCA Victor producer Steve Scholes heard their demos and were impressed by their harmonies. In the spring of 1953, Skeeter and Betty Jack met with Scholes at RCA. He offered them a recording contract. They accepted. We started singing on a radio station and, you know, in a TV station there close to our home in Kentucky. It was really over the river to Cincinnati, Ohio. But we started there and then, uh, we saved up all of our nickels, dimes, and quarters and took our first plane trip to New York City and talked to a man that you know and, and have loved, and that's uh, Steve Scholes. Oh, really? And we actually talked him into uh, listening to us, and when he listened to us, he had Chet Atkins and Eddie Arnold listen with him. And I think I saw Chet Atkins get more excited that day than I've ever seen him since when he heard us, and it was quite, it's quite a good memory. And we signed our contract. The Davis sisters toured regularly following their hit called I Forgot More Than You'll Ever Know, which was a number one country music song in 1953. The Davis sisters also had many more hits. I've forgotten more than you'll ever know about. The song spent eight weeks at number one. On August 1st, 1953, the Davis sisters performed on the WWVA evening show in Wheeling, West Virginia. After midnight, the two left and went back to Covington. Around 7 a.m. on August 2nd, near Cincinnati, a passing motorist fell asleep crashing head-on with the car Skeeter and Betty Jack Davis were riding in. Betty Jack was killed in the collision, while Skeeter Davis had some minor injuries. Now, in 1953, you were involved in a, in a traffic accident. Did that affect your career? Sure did, because uh, that was a tragedy, you know, in my life, and one of the most traumatic... Where did that happen? It was close to Cincinnati, Ohio. We were about 25 miles from home. And a soldier went to sleep uh, driving his car and hit us. We had a head-on collision, and it took the life of Betty Jack and, and left me in a very, very shattered uh, place, too, you know. Well, you, was it, you mean it, it shattered you mentally or and it Mentally, physically, physically every way, yeah, because I was a, just really um, a kind of a helpless soul there for a while mm -hmm. and didn't continue my career until 58. Um, I signed with RCA. 
Skeeter resumed performing after healing, but this time as a solo act. She toured with Ernest Tubb and co-wrote the song Set Him Free for RCA, which was produced by Chet Atkins. The song earned Davis a Grammy Award nomination for the Best Country Recording. Order in the court. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Judge, I've never believed in divorces, unless they just have to be. But after you've heard my story, then I know you'll set this man free. From 1960 to 1962, Davis had top 10 hits with the songs, I Can't Help You, I'm Falling Too, My Last Date With You, Where I Oughta Be, and Optimistic. You say that you're falling. I'm surprised you thought of me But I don't believe your wedding Is just where I ought to be In 1963, Davis achieved the biggest success in her career. Her biggest success was titled the End of the World. It was a country pop crossover hit. The song hit number two on the country and pop charts that year. However, it did top number one on the contemporary charts at number one. The record was also a surprise top five on the rhythm and blues charts, making Davis one of the only few white singers to have a top ten hit in that market. The single sold over 1 million copies and was awarded a gold disc. Goodbye. 
Davis also recorded many other hit pop songs like Gonna Get Along Without You Now. Get along. Cry Me a River. Well, you can cry, cry me a river. Cry, cry me a river. I cried a river over you. I will follow him. I will follow him. Silver threads and golden needles. Silver threads and golden needles cannot mend this heart of mine. And I dare not drown my sorrow in the warm glow of your wine. Sadly, in August 1988, Davis was diagnosed with breast cancer. She underwent a mastectomy of her right breast to treat the cancer and it was in remission for several years before having a reoccurrence in 1996. In 2001, Davis became incapacitated by her breast cancer, which had metastasized. The following year in 2002, she made her final performance at the Grand Ole Opry, performing The End of the World. The clip you're about to see is Skeeter Davis's last performance that she ever gave. You mention this lady's name, they just say, I just love Skeeter Davis, and I know you do too. Would you welcome, please, Miss Skeeter Davis? I love her well, too. Well, you got to now. <laughs> thank you, folks. <laughs> thank you, Jeannie. Appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you so much. And I'm so thankful that this song came into my life back in 1963 and uh, gave me the wonderful, wonderful blessing of getting to cross over into the pop charts, have a number one record, and thank God people still like to hear it today. Hope you enjoy hearing it from 1963. My little contribution to country music. Why does the sun go on shining?
Davis died of breast cancer in Nashville, Tennessee on hospice. September 19th, 2004, aged 72. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Was blind, but now.